Okay, tenth concepts number one is to join a series of lines. So if we want to join this separate these all these separate entities and make them one, this is what we're going to do. We're going to use the join icon. We're going to click the first uh, source line, click the join icon. It tells us select the lines to join to source. Just click on them all and press enter and this becomes one entity. Break a line into two segments without leaving a gap. We're going to go click this icon here. It's called the break at point and you're going to select the line to break and then you're going to tell it what position. So let's break it at the midpoint. Now when we do this, if your O-snap is still on, I find it doesn't work. It'll disappear. So I'm going to do it. You can see half the line disappeared. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to break. This is the object I want to break. I'm turning off my running O-snap and just go and get my one-time midpoint snap and it looks like nothing's happened but these are now two separate entities okay create a gap in a line by specifying two breakpoints so I'm going to turn my O snap back on I'm going to click this icon the break icon it asks you to select the line and this first selection point is going to become the first breakpoint so I'm going to pick the midpoint here and click at the second point. I'm going to go to my nearest and click there and the gap appears in the line. But most often when we do something like that we want to be precise. So there's another way you can use this and be a bit more precise in conjunction with this O track. So this time we're going to put a doorway here and it's going to be 12 inches in from this corner. So we're going to click the break icon. This is the line that we're going to break. We're going to type down here F for enter or F for first point and then we enter. Place the cursor over this end point, let it hover there for a few seconds and then move it down and type in our direct distance so it's 12 inches from there from the corner press enter looks like nothing's happening yet but we need the next step so the second break point is going to be relative to our first break point so we need to type at which stands for from that first point we want to go 0 on the X we're moving down so we have to put a negative minus 30 on the Y enter and that gives us 12 inches from this corner, a 30 inch gap here. Okay. Okay, so a polar array means to put a specified number of these circle, which represent chairs in our example, around the table at an equal distance to each other. So in your handout, uh, doesn't say to select the chair first so I'm going to show you that you can select the chair first and then come to this array icon here and we're doing a polar array you can see because I selected it first it knows that it's recorded here but if I didn't I would need to click this icon and go select the chair and hit enter and then I'd be bounced back here I've already done that so what I need to do is actually click the center point of the rotation of this chair. So I want this chair to rotate around this table so the rotation point is going to be the center of that circle. So pick center point right there, bounces me back, tell it the number of chairs you want and the angle. We could have 180 and we'd only be going around half the circle. The preview is helpful if you like what you see you just accept it. You can also make a rectangular array so I'll make a patio stone here 24 
my 24 patio stone and now I want to get a little patio in here again I'll select it first come to array this time it's rectangular it knows it's our what we've already selected and I need to tell it the number of rows and columns so we'll keep four rows and we'll go to five columns the row offset uh, is the distance from one row to another so you have to start measuring at the beginning of the object so 24 plus a 2 inch gap is 26 and the column offset is going to be the same 26 we're not going to put an angle on this and here's the preview because I have positive numbers in those two it's going to be created to the right and upwards and you can preview it and if you like what you get you accept and that's it okay I've just made a very crude looking toilet here and I'm going to finish it off uh, by just using my arc and do a quick three point arc here I want to get this object into the other side so this is a good time for a mirror command I want it to flip over this midpoint here so I'm going to tell it that that's the mirror it flips over I click the first point of the mirror and the second point erase source objects no I don't want to and that's the default so just press enter and voila my beautiful toilet is finished I now want to create a block of it because right now it consists of all different entities I could group it but I'm going to create a block so I'm going to select up all the entities that make up the block and then I'm going to click the make block icon Let's insert. This is the make block. I need to name it. I'm going to name it Toilet. Now I, I'm going to even give a little model number and description here. I need to pick a point that it will be the insertion point, which is where you will see it grip. So I click that icon, and to me, the most logical place for the grip here probably right there. So I've told it that I this one here convert to block is a good option. You can read about the other two in your handout. And I'll say okay. Now when I click here, this is one entity uh, with one grip. Now, the reason you that picking that point is so important. If I forgot it, by default it's going to make it zero zero and that grip is going to be way over here completely isolated from my block now it comes time to insert the block I'm going to come over here and if I want to insert it I can click this icon here and it is uh, right there because I just made it but I could browse to the path if I needed to and I'm going to click OK and my cursor is right at the insertion point location which is perfect because I can just click and put it where I want to if that grip wasn't there uh, my cursor would be here where the relative to the zero zero my cursor would be here and that toilet would be way off in space up there so that picking the point is very important okay using the block library okay I've just made this block and I'm going to save this here in AutoCAD I'll save it as junk actually I'll save it as junk uh, trial block and I'll say save and I come and I start a new drawing and I'll set my units and my limits and everything
everything's good and now over on this new project I need to um, insert a toilet and I don't want to draw it again and I don't have to because I can use this design center icon to go and get blocks from other drawings so if I click it by default it's going to take me to the sample center that's right within the program but I'm going to go to our clip art drive oh actually no I saved the toilet on my M drive so let me go there uh, it's in AutoCAD and and it's right here junk trial block so I click this and I want to go and get the block from there there's only one there it is and all I need to do is drag and drop and I can go and get that block from that other drawing so it's a very powerful tool uh, to use I'm gonna come here again just to show you that in our clip art drive which we have to find there it is clip art AutoCAD, Architectural, Bathroom, here are some toilets and urinals, and we have elevations, plans, uh, all sorts of things. So we can drag and drop from here. Uh, there's all sorts of different kind of blocks in each of these uh, little symbol libraries, we would call them.